Owen, Lara, thanks a million for hosting us here in Turles today. Lovely premises, Lara. Thanks very much, thanks. Uh, it's going to be a different Christmas for you maybe a little bit this year. You're going to be pretty busy, clearly, with your yeah. businesses, but slightly different Christmas from last year. Have you got your head around that yet? Yeah, I suppose I have. Um, as, as Owen will probably touch on later on, I was never any good for the winter training anyway, so maybe it's, it's going to be the same Christmas as every other year. That's a fact, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to enjoy the Christmas and then sure, whatever, whatever happens, but like, that's... Yeah, to take a bit of getting used to on that sort of thing where it's, and you know, you're not exactly in full training around Christmas time, as Lara says, you might winter well, but it is a diff slightly different mindset too. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah and look, Christmas, you like your time off, you know what I mean? You get to meet your family, your friends and that, and uh, you know, you, you have one eye on the next year, the pre-season and that, but um, you know, as Lara will find now, you know what I mean? We'll say when you're not involved, you will miss the first, the early weeks. It's the camaraderie with the lads you miss. Um, mm. You know, it's it's gone so professional too, is that, I found the last couple of years you were learning something new every day you went into the dressing room, especially in the Tiberi set up yeah. the last couple of years. Yeah. They really brought it to a, a different <coughs> level and uh, you know, you miss that discipline side of it. Now I suppose you can you can go do what you want, go eat what you want and that. So you know, I definitely miss that and Larry will probably find as the year goes on yeah. the games are hard enough. And I found I found the Monster Final very hard now, I was watching from, from the press box and you know to see Tiberi win the uh, Monster Championship, that's great, but you'd love to be part of it and that's only natural and um know going to Croke Park then and, and not being on the team bus going in and uh, you know you, you definitely do miss it so you'll probably, yeah. you'll probably see that as the year goes on there but look yeah. everyone, everyone finds their own ways to, to get yeah. around. There's guys like that's what a lot of people are saying you're like you know will you miss it you're going to miss it and it's, it's going to be something that I'm going to find out as as, as the year goes on but I kind of have myself like you know I actually think I'm going to actually enjoy going to the matches I'm actually looking forward to going to the first few league matches that Hipper are involved in I'm actually looking forward to going to the championship matches mm. And I'm going to embrace. I'm going to embrace that, and I'm going to look at it as well. I'm delighted for what I got and the years we got, and I'm going to try and say, oh. but it'll be very interesting to see. It won't be able to answer that till, as you yeah, say, the monster final yeah. sort of comes around. I actually didn't go to any league matches during the year. You know what I mean? I kind yeah. of just didn't probably have the heart to go to them. You know what I mean? And I was missing out, but I just went to the first championship game, and it was when you were doing a bit then on the media side, you weren't mingling with the crowd. Yeah, so I actually like that because right. there's no one there tapping on the shoulder, watching it at, or you know, I mean, you could do it out there and things like that. Yeah, so true, I was actually yeah. away from it, and I enjoyed that side of it, but. You know, when the when it's the monster final there and the team wins, like you'd be saying to yourself, love to be part of that. Yeah. But you know, that's 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 the joys of it, and uh, we all we all had our time. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We loved it, and we, and we the success we had it was great days. Like, well, even it's funny you bring it up because I remember watching the uh, you contributed to an RT documentary a couple of years ago, and yourself and your now wife, I think, had oh, gone yeah, to was yeah. it Kenny Cork. You went to, and like a lot of the language that you were using yeah. around that really struck me. I have to say, you were talking yeah. about the idea of how institutionalised you were as a player in that team environment and being yeah. controlled by somebody else and suddenly Tip were out before the quarterfinals, Turles Arsfields were out as well yes. and suddenly you were left with two blank hands wondering what you're going to do and you're yeah. at this game saying this is the first game we've ever been to together. Yeah. I found that remarkable. Um, and that's very interesting, you said I suppose we're looking up from Turles Arses, we're after contesting I think 12 out of the last 14 county finals. So every year Turles Arses were contesting if not winning a county final and Tipperary were always at the busy end of the year as well, the majority of the years, but this was the first year that Sarses were finished and Tipperary were finished mm -hmm. and it was in the middle of the summer and it was the first time I found there's actually nowhere to go on the Tuesday, there's nowhere to go on the Thursday in the weekend and you start saying it's, not, it's, it's kind of surreal because you're so used to getting the gear for either club or yeah. county and this was the first time we had the summer to actually do what we wanted and it, it, it was, it was definitely a void and definitely a hole there anyway, yeah. And it, like it changes life as well, right? Like because the other part of that documentary was you going up to your mother's house and she had got all the the gear and all the yeah. compartments. Like the hilarious comment of how this this there's a brilliant two way street. It works for everybody. Yeah. But like, but there's actually something deeper there as well. Like you get to call up to your mother three or four times a week true. and have that chat. And so suddenly life is life is going to change a little bit. It's it's, it's true. And as as, as you just said that, my mother wouldn't say it to me, but she said it to Elaine only last week. She's I'm going to I'm going to miss him calling up for the gear. Now she'd never say that she was yeah. delighted to see me calling up for the gear, and it was a, but just say there's always kind of just a uh, there's an emotion involved with that that my mother knew I was calling up three or four times a week for the gear and doing whatever had to be done, but she enjoyed us enjoyed me calling up. But as she just said to Helen last week, I'm going to miss him calling up for the gear, and yeah. it's just something now, we wouldn't say to each other. It was a two-way system. I firmly believe it was one. I'll go in your direction. I think most people watching uh, felt that as well. I did want to initially set out the relationship between the two of you guys, you had very different paths into the Tipperary yeah. full forward line and like the awareness of each other. Owen, you might go first in terms of when you first had an awareness of Lara Corbett. We got to the minor all in 1999 and Galway beat us in the final and um, you know, I suppose we didn't perform great that day and if we had one or two more forwards maybe that would have performed, we might have won the game and that but 
I hadn't really heard Hillelar that much, to be honest with you. And I remember coming to the county final that year between Tumi Vera and Nina, and the minor final was on before it. And Lair was there wearing the yellow helmet, number 12, flying up and down the pitch like they, they beat Knockerville Kickham as well on the day. And I remember coming home and saying, there's a lad that got away that, you know, if he was playing, he definitely would have got a few scores in Croke Park when we were needed. And then the year after, 2000, still not knowing much about Lair, um, going to the 2000 county final, Tumi Vera and Turles Arsfields. Yeah. And Lair was at the same crack again, flying it around the pitch. Mm. And uh, that's when you kind of said, sort of, this guy looks good, but still, I didn't see a future for Larry because I didn't know anything about him from previous. Or you mm. were just saying he looks good, like, and uh, I think it wasn't until Nicky English came in as the manager in that he obviously spotted yeah. the talent with Lair, and uh, that's that's when it all kicked off for, yeah. for Lair and for Tip. Your awareness of this fella? Um, fair, different, remember, there was a big talk about Owen Kelly under 14. I think the Turles CBS play Killing All in a, was it a Crow Cup? Did, school, did it yeah. go to a replay? Did you get your appendix taken out the week before that you couldn't play? I think so, I'm not too sure now. Yeah, yeah. I so, and yeah. I, I just remember that. But all the talk was Owen Kelly and Dolan, and, and Dolan Shelley yeah. at the time. That was my first time getting awareness. But actually, properly seeing him, properly seeing him playing at a level, just say at Inter-County, was the, just a minor. Um, five years under 21 then. It was huge. Like No one had ever played just say five years under, 20, un, under 21. So the name was coming all the time, all the time. And... Usually in Tipperary, they start talking about you at 14, they stop talking about you at 18. <laughs> so this is the first time that they felt that they thought, yeah, he's coming, he's coming, and kept coming and produced it right through to the top. Like, you know, so it's fantastic to see it coming right through yeah. because they build you up to bring you back down. Yeah. But Owen is probably too strong for that. But the, the paths to where you eventually got to at almost the exact same time probably couldn't be more opposite. Yeah. But your path was not exactly that totally clear either. What the hell were you doing in goal? You were playing, <laughs> you were playing <laughs> as goalkeeper. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. I suppose like anything, um, when you're from a small club, uh, numbers are small, so they need to throw the, the young fella in the goals to make up teams. Like I would have been playing maybe under 21 in goals when I was under 14, and I'm sure a lot of other lads in rural parishes were doing the same in small clubs and that. So I, my first debut with the minors was in 1997 when I played in goal. Actually, the minor keeper from the year before, Fergal Horgan, he's an inter-county referee now, he was uh, suspended. So I got my chance in goal and uh, actually finished that season then for the minors. Playing corner forward, we got beaten in a minor all Ireland semi-final. But you know, that's that's where mine kind of kicked off. And my my first time in the Tipperary dressing room as a senior player, I was double jobbing. Yeah. I was a goalkeeper one night in training, and I was a forward the next night in training. Yeah. And then I was coming in with four and five hurlies, like because I didn't know where I was going to be playing. And I remember uh, the 2000 Munster final. I was just on the extended panel. I remember Cork beat Tip in the Munster final. Up at seven to say, and I remember for the quarter final then. I was uh, handed the number 16 goalkeeper's jersey. Okay, Galway, wasn't it? Against Galway, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, in the All-Ireland quarter-final, and I was full sure I was just going to be sitting on the bench that day, sub-goalkeeper. You know, 18 mm. years of age, happy out. One nervous moment, Harry Brendan Cummins got injured, and I was just hoping <laughs> hoping he was going to get up, like that I wasn't going in there. But next thing, with about 15 minutes to go, uh, Nick English just turned to hop point, and he says, get the number 16 outfield jersey. And this is the first time. You had two different jerseys. You had one he had blue. A, I had the goalkeeper's jersey, yeah. subkeeper's jersey, sixteen on me, yeah. and he had an outfield jersey, number sixteen, in the bag, and Hoppin just thrown it to me. And the next thing, I had this on my back. And next thing, before I knew it, I was standing up. Nicky English just hand around me, saying, "You're going in there, full forward. Just, just try and get on the ball and do what you do. Do what you're able to do." Um, lads, just want to show you the photograph of the 2001 All Ireland team, the team shot before the game, and get your thoughts on that. It's just it's, it's, it's surreal because it's so it's so long ago, and when you see the guys that's in that's in it, so you see Tom Costello in it, you see Eugene O'Neill in it, you see Declan Ryan in it. Um, it's like I can't remember the last time that I laid eyes on Eugene O'Neill or Tom Costello. Can you? Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. Joy, no, just you don't people just dis yeah. just disappear, like you know, you, just, yeah. you don't meet people, like you know. And we would have trained four nights, three nights a week together, John, for X amount of years. And Larry's right, you don't get to meet these f f yeah. people, and mm. don't chance you might meet him is rare. Funeral, funeral or a wedding, or a wedding like, <laughs> yeah, which yeah, so. you know, sometimes it's a sad circumstance. But yeah. the, the one memory I have of that picture is that the Hogan stand wasn't there oh, yeah, right. at the time. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was a building site. It was a building site. <laughs> yeah, that was it. So uh, we were right. So I'd say a lot of us are staring into the building site. Yeah, you know yeah, if you ask us what we're looking at, yeah. that was it. So you know, and um, at the time, then like it was everyone's dream, really, to accept the Lee McCarthy Cup or to climb up the steps. Yeah. And for those couple of seasons. Mm. The cup was actually uh, presented on the pitch, on the field, yes, uh, that's right, which yeah. was as as players, it's not the same buzz. It's not the same, no. not the same buzz. Yeah, no.
The, you both come in in 2000, as you mentioned, Larry, you started uh, a game in the league and on you, I think, came off the bench in the championship. I spoke to Nicky English in the lead-in to the uh, chat today just to get yeah. a bit of a sense from him because he was the one, as you've mentioned, yeah, who yeah. Bought, brought both of you into it. Um, and, and we've mentioned the very different paths that you had, but Larry, with you specifically, Nicky was looking for something very specific in that team yeah. and he was trying to uh, find the player that would fit yeah. that thing. And it was a league game against Clare in Ennis. In, in, in Ennis, remember yeah. that? Um, how that started, we had, my mother and father did a pub in um, the other end of town. They had it for the last maybe 20, 20 odd years. They're out of it a few years. But a phone call came to the pub because back in 2000, not everyone had a mobile phone. So you ring 0504 and hopefully there's someone's going to pick up the other end. So the phone, call came to the, the phone call came to the pub and I remember coming in and I remember my mum saying to me that um, I think it was either, I can't remember, was it Nicky English or Jack Bergen at the time was after making a phone call to the pub and saying that um, there's a clipper playing clear down in Ennis on, a, on, on Sunday. I said, there's someone after rings, this is only a hoax. This is not. So yeah. I'd never played minor, never played under 21. I said, there's only going to, a phone call going to come to the pub that you're going to play in a senior match. This is, she said, I'm only telling you what was said. You have to go up outside the Park Avenue, which is where we are now. And you have to be there, I think it's around 11.30. The bus is leaving from there. So I said to myself, I said, I'll take a chance and go up, but I won't get out of the car till I see the bus and I see who's on it and I see what's exactly what's going to happen here. So at around 11.15, I pulled up just up the road in the car and I see this minibus pulling up. It was only about maybe a 14-seater minibus. And we were all pulling up. And I see yourself getting out of the car and John O'Brien getting out. Yeah. So I said, there's some bit of truth to the story. Oh, Kelly's getting out and John O'Brien is getting out. And I remember saying, Got onto the bus. I knew no one on the bus. I would never have spoke to yourself. I would have never spoke to John O'Brien. We never came in contact with each other. And I remember getting onto the bus the whole way down to Ennis. And I don't know that I speak to anybody. Yeah, I, Maybe I, I, won't, I won't lie to you. You didn't say a word. And when you got down, word. we were looking at each other. Who's this lad? Who the hell is this lad? Yeah. You know, this and tall, lanky fella yeah. getting on. We were there like, what's going yeah. on here? And I remember down in the dressing room, I had no tip togs, no tip socks. I remember hot pint. I said, give me out a pair of togs out of the, out of the bag. Yeah. This is the start of it. Nicky had said that there was a round of club games in Tipperary that weekend and there was a lot of players unavailable and possibly only for that, yeah. that he mightn't have even asked you into it. I don't know if you were aware of that. Yeah, time, but and, I, and I would believe, because I couldn't believe when it went down that it was actually playing. But when I looked around, I think there were only 16 players. So I think there was a very, very small yeah. panel that was there. Yeah, that's yeah I, actually, I actually think that, that could be true, but I'd say probably even Nicky seen some of himself as a player in yourself. You know what I mean? Like over six foot, plenty pace, and corner forward, mm. you know, and yeah. sometimes a manager can um, see see a, uh, himself in a certain player, and I'd say he definitely, you know, relived his couple of uh, your his championship days nearly through you yeah. as well. We'll say, you know what I mean, mm. and uh, like pace at inter county level is a must. Well, that's think, exactly what he was after. That's what he, yeah. pace and physicality said yeah. the two things he was after, and he looked out at one point in that game against Clare, yeah. and he saw you fielding a ball above Frank Lawn's head, yeah, I he and he turned around to his selector, yeah. and I'm not going to use the phrase that he yeah. used, yeah. but uh, he was impressed. Yeah. Did, he, did he chat to you after that? I, with, with half time, I remember going using the title at half time, and he was standing beside me at half time, and he said to me, that was a um, good catch you caught there, and I just said, thanks very much. The bond with Nicky English seems to be something that was maybe not achieved with a huge amount of managers or coaches from that yeah. point on, but it was a special thing, right? It was. Well, we hit the ground running. Like, we didn't lose a game that no, year. That year between, yeah. 17, between championship and league, 17 games, yeah. and we were undefeated. Yeah. And we actually won the league final against Clare that year, which, was, which was a big like, thing, yeah, you yeah, know? It was, like it was, to, yeah. When you get to a league final, you want to win it. Mm. Yeah. And we beat Clare that day, and then we had to play him again a month, la a month yeah. later in the Munster Championship. And we actually performed well in that league yeah, final. I remember that, yeah, the two of us actually played well and the, the, a lot of talk after that was that just say uh, Owen's in one corner and I was in the other corner and I remember the media coming to Nicky after it and kind of saying, well now, Owen Kelly and Larry Corbett and instead of blowing us up, he said, these lads have a lot to prove yet. Yeah. And that took the pressure off again. So all these things, were, like, you know, it was fantastic to hear that, you know, he had your back, he was thinking about, you know, looking after you and it was all about the next step, the next step. Yeah, and I, I remember even in the month between the league final and the Clare game, Clare came with this massive phys physicality. Yeah. And I remember being hit one night in training, John Carroll hit me. Yeah. And I was lying on the ground looking for a bit of sympathy. Yeah. And Nicky just came on, get up out of this. <laughs> you know, so like yeah. it was just, you know, he said it was a bit rougher than that. Now, yeah, I know, like, yeah, You yeah, know, yeah. that was the gist of well, it. Well, he'd been there himself and he knew. Yeah. That was it. And, he, you know, he, you're not wrestling on your laurels around here. Like we're, we're going to battle with Clare in a couple of weeks' time uh, and be ready. I watch back a lot of the 2001 final in, in the lead into the, the chat today and like that Galway team when you look at you know the likes of Joe Rabbit and Eugene yes. Cleaner and a lot of yeah. very Alan Kearns, yeah. very impressive players and you know yes. the nucleus of a very good team. 
And I was looking at you, your performances, obviously, sort of individually. Larry, you were living off a lot of scraps maybe early on in that game. Yeah. Um, didn't get didn't get much of a sniff. Is that fair enough to say? It, 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 would, it would be fair to say, I'd say, if Brian Amara didn't get sent off in the semi-final yeah. again, Wexford, I probably would reckon I wouldn't have started really? the final. Now, the only man, he'd have to go back to Nicky for that and yeah. find out the proper yeah. answer. Yeah. So, that's... that Because I was after being taken off in every single championship game up as far as the final. Um... I got taken off a half time in the Wexford match in the replay. Eugene O'Neill came on and scored two, two one. Goals. He did, yeah. Out of just bang, 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 like. Yeah, it was that kind of a game though where it was. Um, I wouldn't say it was free flowing hurling, no. but it was kind of in patches. Tip dominated early, got the scores on the board. Then Galway dominated, tip dominated. Then Galway came with a late surge at the end, but we had enough on the board just to, yeah. to get over the line, you know. And, it was a good uh, battle between you and uh, a, a veteran, Oli Kelly, yeah, yeah, that's 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 24 that, years of age. That, that was, was yeah. assertive us, yeah, but, um, you know, I remember Declan Ryan, I suppose, showed all his experience that day, like yeah. he just, you know. The ball, the hand pass he gave to yeah, Marco Leary, exactly. like was just yeah. unreal. Yeah. It, yeah. Was, it wasn't, he just held it up. It's actually slow motion if you actually look at it. Yeah. He was looking, he was actually waiting for Mark to make the run, bang, top corner. Yeah, even, was actually and that was the first goal, and even the second goal, it was kind of a, a a scrambled goal by Mark O'Leary, but Declan is in the middle of it as well, yeah, and he's yeah. kicking it on a he's yard or yeah. two. And you know, his presence, he was a big physical guy, like 33 years of age, so he kept yeah. the ball inside there. Yeah, you know, his strength was his strength was massive at the end. There are small yeah. things yeah. that maybe the, the supporter doesn't see, like you know, yeah. Um, and you, as you say, tip led start to finish, it was three points in the end. It was 10 years since the previous win under Babs. Yeah. Pretty big party, decent, decent atmosphere, I would think, after that. What I was thinking at the time, we jumped on the bandwagon. And wherever the wagon was going, we were, we were going. So if the party was going, the party, we were just going there. And that was kind of the same with the matches. Like, we couldn't believe that. We thought, is this the normal for Tipperary? Just to, we were talking out every day and we were winning every day. We just thought this was normal. We couldn't believe. Oh, then the years that came after, it's only when you, the years after you realise. This is going to happen every year. Yeah, yeah, this is it. This is going to happen every week. Yeah. But it was a roller coaster year. Roller coaster, so We didn't yeah. lose a game. No, no. And, you know, we were only in the dressing room door and here we were. Uh, preparing to be f flown off to yeah. South Africa for two weeks, holidays, yeah. and it was all star trips, and this was all new to us all. Like, and the next thing, um, you know, the, like it's just going to be some party. This is the right party. party. <laughs> yeah. And we had a few characters <laughs> on in yeah. the spot. Yeah. Some goalkeeper there were beating. Yeah. Was, uh, he was yeah. the ring. He, he was the ringleader. He was the ringleader. So we're going to say, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. no, it was it was it was great times. Like, yeah. and uh, you know, sure, everywhere we were going, you were getting the clap on the back. And, yeah. You know, sure, we were we were lapping yeah. it all up. Of course, of course, but, you would. Like, I hear of it straight away, the first thing that springs to my mind is the turnover of nearly managers. Yeah. You know, it was year after year, like there was nearly four or five managers in the space of maybe four or five years. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, that doesn't bring continuity then. Like, you know, kind of what you want in a team structure is, you, know, you like to have continuity, we'll say, you know, because different managers come with different styles, come with different attitudes, different applications. So, um, you know, there, there is big changes along there because I think yeah. if you look at all the successful teams, Kilkenny's, the yeah. Kerry footballers, yeah. Manchester United, the common denominator is they've won manager at yeah. the helm like for, yeah. for long periods of time, you know. Probably deep down we probably hadn't the, the quality of players that you need to contest yeah. all Ireland's, if we're being honest about it, and yeah. we were definitely fifth or sixth in the, in the picking order. Yeah, and uh, like in, in them years then as well, like, you know, and it's, it's, it's there that Owen Kelly was into forwards and o kind of on his own, to help he wanted. Um, I look at myself as an individual, I probably didn't it's not on I know we speak about there, but when Eamon O'Shea showed me how to actually play as a corner forward and play a part of the team and get more involved. But they were probably your best years yeah. from 2001 to 2006, seven. Well, was you were, it? You were winning, like, young hurler of the year over the, Twice. Over the early part. That yeah. was it, yeah, you know, yeah. look, I suppose for myself, um, I was probably on top of my game then, yeah. you know, but like, you know, personal actors there are great, but you want to be contesting Munster finals yeah. and going to Croke Park, all our finals, and, and we weren't doing that. You know, like, the few heartbreaking defeats then we'll say the one point defeat here and the one point defeat there kind of you know was masking over maybe that ah, we're not maybe too far yeah, away yeah, when yeah. when realistically we were miles, miles away it, like, yeah. but we, we were playing those years in hope more hope. more than in yeah, belief yeah that's true um like over those last years michael doyle comes in obviously directly after nicky and he lasts one year and then a couple of years for the next manager not much in the way of success obviously and then um Babs returns and there's been a lot written and a lot said and particularly even over the last few weeks but 
Just to sort of give some context to that, I wanted to ask you about 1989 when Tipperary won the All-Ireland. Again, you were, there's a year between you, you were seven and eight years of age, and Babs has won the All-Ireland as yeah. tip manager, um, and a little older, obviously, again, than in 91 when he won the second. Like, as kids, do you, do you remember how you, how you felt toward Babs at that point, or is that something that's been sort of blotted out by what happened previously or, or subsequently? No, like they were, they were great memories when you were in school and the cup coming around and local players from your local village playing on the team and that. And so the one memory I have of that Tipperary team, like it's just how flamboyant they were actually playing. But even then, when you'd see them off the pitch at homecomings and that, like they were kitted out in suits. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. No, these they look like royalty, mm. yeah. and uh, that was all due to Babs. Like he, yeah. he turned them, he turned those guys' lives inside out. Like when he comes in then in two thousand and six, is that? Colouring some of your relationship with Babs at that point, you know, the what you know about him from, from those years or what people have told you about him or what your parents have told you about him or what's that relationship like initially? I, th I thought now myself when Babs came in first, when he entered at Tristan first, that he had the players eating out of his hand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you'd heard all the, the stories about him being a players man and definitely yeah. he, he tried to deliver that to the players early, early when he came in. But How did I suppose you, do you How always did you had, you know, well, like, in fairness, when he came in first, like anything players wanted to be looked after, gear-wise, right like that, he was yeah. very good that way. But I suppose you had the controversies <laughs> hanging over him of his days, maybe with Offaly and even back as far as 1990 with oh, Tip and Cork, oh, yeah. well, Donkeys Own Derbies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had the, off, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Offaly scenario in yeah. 1998 when he said the Offaly were like a, a sheep in a heap and those kind of things. And I think we kind of... Got to learn quickly enough when, when Babs came in after a couple of defeats that he used to like to pass the blame over yeah. to the players. And I suppose that's something that was um, evident when Offaly were playing as well. And I remember in Michael Dignan's book, he said that Babs yeah. used to absolve all the blame for the performance and for how the team hurled on the day that he used to hand it all over to the players. Like, And yeah. when you're in that level of sport, like it's everybody has to yeah. be in together. It's, it's support you want. You want someone having your back. like when And then... If there's any kink in the system, if there's any crack, it's going to come out the day of a championship match mm. and it's going to come down when the pressure is the highest. So you want to let having your back. And um, we just knew straight away that he wasn't going to back you up. We played awfully in the championship qualifier in, in Turles. And I remember we called five names out in the dressing room. The team wasn't called out. This is about 10 minutes before we went out, called five names into the dressing room, or sorry, into the showers. So, all right, so the five of us went in. I can't remember who was there. I remember myself, Benny, Don. I think John Carroll was there. Yeah, the, the six forwards that started against Limerick yeah. went into, the, went into, went the, into shower. the shower. Yeah, called us in Annie and he says, lads, you're not, uh, you won't be playing today. So five lads walked so out. Five lads, that was grand. So and he called, five lads came back called in. another five lads, called him in. And I remember now, because he be one of my very good friends that lived beside him is Pa Burke. It was Pa's first time starting a championship match. Pa didn't know the night before, didn't know tomorrow, in. And when Pa went into the shower, his name was called. I remember coming out, he was this, this, um, he, it's very similar, he saw a ghost inside. He said, I'm, I'm playing, he says. I said, I said, are you playing? I said, no, no, I'm not playing. I was told a minute ago. Oh, yeah, are you playing? Pa says, yeah, I'm playing. Jeez, he says, what? So I said, Pa, very, very simply now, forget about who's not playing now. So Pa work is playing, get that right, we'll sort out everything else after the match. Mm -hmm. We'll try and get that right. But this is what you were dealing with, that the lads that were going out were a nervous wreck going out because only found out, and then the pressure was on because the rest of us weren't starting. Yeah. So no one knew what was I, I think, what the, was thing, the thing there is his management style yeah. was very different yeah. to what we had been kind of used to the previous couple of years. Mm -hmm. But well, you know when you get talking to other lads in other counties, they, it, was, it was kind of a right laugh. Yeah. They were saying, like, you know, Babs is some crack, it's right, it's right laugh. Did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said last week? And it's grand, but we were inside. We were taking it serious. And when other lads are actually laughing at you, like it's actually heartbreaking at times because it's a laugh for everybody else. So you'd yeah, rather be laughing at other people. And, that, and that's probably a disappointing thing from, from Babs's point of view, from the legacy that he yeah. has in Tipperary Hurling with Tipperary supporters. Yeah. As a player, he was phenomenal. As a manager then brought Tip out of it, back from the day. Yeah. You know, so he has a legacy mm -hmm. there. But like that's, you know, at the moment, everything he kind of speaks about with, uh, with Tipperary seems to be a negative vibe. And... Uh, you know, you'd meet a lot of, of, of supporters now yeah. that are probably, uh, you know, they're not very happy with some of the comments yeah. that, that Babs is saying, we'll say, and, um, you know, as you said, maybe sometimes other counties seem to yeah. be having a joke about it's Babs. Like, you know? it, when you read the article, it never says, Shane McCallan was mad at a match. Shane McCallan had some game. Owen Kelly gave an unbelievable score. You don't see that about any player. So sure, they definitely played one game somewhere along the line or done something right, 
but everybody seems to do something wrong, so it's very hard to take his opinion on board when everything is wrong. And I'm sure if Babs was here, he'd probably have a counterpoint, I'm sure, to what yeah, you're saying yeah, in terms yeah. of his experience of those years. Yeah. And I know that one thing that he says about the process of him getting the job in the course of the job interview, that he said that the county board are very uh, adamant about team discipline, and his sense was that that wasn't a coincidence. Is that something you understand, that essentially the accusation here is that Tipperary had lost... The players had lost discipline over the previous years and it was his job to come in and whip them into shape. Well, in, in Tipperary, when Tipperary lose, the rumour mill goes into overdrive. Yeah. So they'll always find an excuse on the field, off the field. And in those years, it was more so off the field is what they like to harp on about. And I suppose even of the recent team, if there was a defeat, and maybe a, a close game, mm. they like to find a, a rumour yeah. as well that they can, they can spin like that this guy is to blame. You know, this guy was socialising when he shouldn't have been and whatnot. But like... Um, you know, like as I said, I think Babs had the players eating out of his hand when he when he came in, and I think it kind of all changed after we lost the 2006 Munster final to Cork. Oh, um, yeah. You know, in a game we'll yeah. say we were underdogs and we could have maybe yeah, won it. Could have, could have won it. Yeah. There was one or two chances we had maybe, and we missed them, and yeah. they, they could have swung the game. And I think if we had to win that yeah. Munster final 2006, yeah. Yeah. I think. Uh, things might have went down a different path after that. Different really? Path, yeah. I definitely that, do. Because like, the state of the relationship now that you guys have just outlined, yeah. that Babs outlined on Off the Ball and News Talk recently, like, it, they're yeah, very I, different pictures. Yeah, right? I think I mean, if we had to win that 2006 Munster final, it would have been Tip's first Munster Championship um, since 2001. Yeah. It was Cork uh, in Turles, so it was the hype going into that game yeah. was massive. Like, you know what I mean? Tip Cork Munster final in Simple Stadium is... It's out on its own. Yeah. You know, there was but a the, massive build-up to it. To give it another way then, in 2007 then, we played Wexford. If we were to beat Wexford that day, we were playing Kilkenny in the semi-final. I don't believe we were going to win the semi-final because we couldn't be just... Able, and that's, we, yeah. we were actually happy as an because we knew that this was over for Babs yeah. in 2007, that we are going to start something in 2008. Yeah. I think 2007 was more of a, a turbulent year. You know, even small things, I remember being on the bus from Simple Stadium for about an hour and a half afterwards. Up going here. out for the meal, out to yeah. the Turles Golf yeah. Golf Club and seeing the Cork players yeah. walking down. Yeah, you saying that? There was kind of even a tension on the bus. Yeah. We weren't allowed to walk down. We weren't allowed to walk down. No. There was even a tension just, yeah, on we the just bus. Just, yeah. After but that, whereas you had lost the Munster final, you're yeah. devastated. Yeah. 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 You just want to actually get out of the place but, and you're still on a bus. And as Gash, you said, do you remember the Cork class, Pat, you'd have the slacks. Yeah. They were dressed to the nines. I remember Jody and the boys passing us off. Um, the bus and they were coming down, coming down the bridge and you used to always pull in. They always come in for a couple of pints in the pubs, you used to go to the Anor for yeah. a bit of food. And I remember you turned to me and said, if I ever win a Munster final in Torres, I'm walking down that town. Yeah, that's one of the, remember, that's one of the things I, I always wanted. I always wanted to be Cork yeah. in the Munster final in Torres and just walk down the I town after it. Now, when was our we, first we won Munster finals in, in, 19, in 2009, we, we beat Watford. Up here, and we walked down. We got a chance to do it, but I never got a chance to be Cork in the Munster final. Yeah. Tip Cork something special. Yeah. You know, but any Munster final, yeah. you definitely treasure it. Like. You, you said to me in the dressing room after we were, were, were getting talked about, I'm walking down that town. Yeah, I did definitely, yeah. I'm walking down that town, because I remembered, and we just, it was nice, because you're, you're free, you're easy, but you're mixed in with the crowd coming yeah. down. And there's an air of confidence, and that's where you get the counts where people are delighted, the supports are delighted, and you feel that like a sense of achievement. Yeah, I never forget you that. Know, so I, I just thought maybe even you know it's small little things, even the tension on that bus, yeah. kind of I'd say spilled over to a day or two later, like and yeah. you know, when you lose a monster final, it's it's devastated. Like we were all devastated, management players alike. Like not to move forward, but in 2000 and um, 2008, the beginning of 2008, when just a lean came in, I teamed up straight away with John Casey, which is the visit we had, and Keen O'Neill. And on a daily basis, I worked with them on just, say, getting the legs, getting the hamstrings right. So there was no such thing as going down to Wexford, quick fix, come back, yeah, where, like, you know, the job is done. These, they don't work. Mm. But what works is on a daily basis, working with your physio, working with your physical trainer. Plus then what you had then is you had John Casey relaying back to the management that this is the situation where Lara is at the minute. This is what he's able to do. When I was injured, I had to go to Babs myself. So now he used to say to himself, is Lair trying to pull a quick one here or is he really injured? So he'd ask himself two questions. And more often than not, maybe he was asking himself the question, oh no, he won't train. So, but was the professional set up is when Liam came in, he, he, he put me in contact, he said, with John Casey, and now you're working with him and you, you have to be honest with these guys and tell them exactly what you're capable of doing and then they know the level that you're at. Mm. And it takes that element of doubt out of the equation. It, 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 it does. So now... John Casey is going to the management and said, well, now, this is exactly what you can do. If I'm not good enough then, or if I'm not putting enough of an effort, that's fine. Hold on a minute, we don't have a space for you. Because everything is done step by step. And that's where I really got the confidence back up. 
through just uh, the physical trainer, Keen O'Neill at the time, he's the manager of, yeah. of, of Kildare. Like, he was unbelievable working with John Casey, working with Liam Sheedy, so it's just a stepping stone and you have to fill in the gaps. See, it probably just goes back to what I said earlier, management styles, like, you yeah. know, um, you know, the good manager probably, you surround yourself with, with these top class people yeah. and then you delegate out the, their, the work to them. Yeah. So they look after the, the certain jobs that they have yeah. to look after, they feed it back to you. And yeah. you know, I suppose from that, that side with Babs was probably, no, he was probably managing the way he had managed maybe 10 or 12 years ago. When I suppose maybe there was injuries in hurling, but maybe they weren't as, as prominent, yeah. maybe because now, nowadays the cruise shield is so prominent and the well, hip The game is changing. The game has changed. a little yeah. bit more uh, professional. Gym, gym, gym work is more in, yeah. involved and, uh, you know, like the hits are, I think, are harder. You know, it's, it's, it's even a small bit faster again, like, and it's, it's more physical. So, you know, it definitely, and that, that was even 2006 and seven, so it has changed even more so again, like, but, uh, you know, probably, Probably, Babs didn't probably roll with the times maybe on his, on his second coming as, as tip manager. It's like from the outside in, it seems like such a shame for like three people and four, I think if you throw in Brendan Cummins into that mix as well, and maybe more who are legends of the game here in Tipperary. And like it doesn't seem as if any relationship exists. I don't know. Have you either well, you spoken to him over well, the last eight years? I, 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 like, if I can speak for myself, I don't think I ever had a, a cross word with Babs, to be no. honest with you. There was never a, a shout match or anything like that. Yeah. And I'd say you're no, probably the same. Exactly. Because yeah. that's our. Uh, well, maybe it needed that. That's our personality. Maybe it needed a shout match. But I don't think he was ever going to get to that. Maybe. You weren't going to win. Like, no, you weren't going to win, yeah. But like, yeah, I think Slow, yeah. when when small little things happen early on, yeah. As I mentioned already, you kind of you put up and you kind of shut yeah. up, like. And I suppose we weren't at an age where you were, um, you know, and maybe we didn't have the same mentality as as kind of the Cork players maybe had when yeah. they when they weren't happy. They were very vocal about it, being led by a couple of players. And you mentioned about relationships there, like we'd say, you know, like when there's never. Uh, cross words or f in mm. a firing line between two lads or in, in a dressing room mm. like you know you'd probably be disappointed I suppose uh, that Babs probably has that negative negativity towards the, the Tipperary team since like because you know like we all want the same you know we want to win all Ireland with Tipperary and be very very yeah. competitive and you know it's probably it's disappointing that Babs finds it that he has to knock his, his own when yeah. Tipperary would have done so much for him like in all the years and uh, I think the shame here is that uh, you know, sometimes when his name is mentioned, now he comes yeah. with, a, with, with, with with laughter, like you know, after after all he has achieved uh, and done for Tip. And, and I suppose at the end of the day, then as well, we're all Tipperary people, so we all play. So just say uh, you want to win the Lee McCarthy Cup, and the Lee McCarthy Cup, if Tip do win it, go back to the Burlington, and it's a place where you want to be. Just say, uh, for for instance, this year, 2016. If Tipperary are looking enough to win the Lee McCarthy Cup, just a place where I want to be is up in the Burlington, in the middle of the players, just say congratulating them and be part and Meet be part the of it. Meeting fellas you played with, yeah. played and say that's it. But of all the times that we have won, either just say if it's a Munster Championship, if it's an All Ireland final, winning or losing, I've never once seen him part of in the hotel there with the management, with the players mixing and mingling. Because at the end of the day, we're only all Tipperary people, so it's just every bit of negativity that comes out and says it, you're distance yourself from. The place where you were part well, and, and, and what your home and where you want to be deep down. So all the negativity, it's fine, but it, you're distancing yourself from it, and there's no point in that. In, in 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 life, that's probably all that we have. It's hurling that spoke about. It's in your heart. It's in your blood, and you want to be part of it. I don't ever want to distance myself from it, because mm -hmm. you like by um, putting an article on the paper or by saying something negative about the people that you you, you want to be part of. I'm going to sort of fast forward a little bit to uh, 2008, a man comes onto the scene that you'd later describe as um, your messiah and he's obviously another guy, as a lot of these people you've worked with, who has had history with Tipperary as a, as a player as well, um, has stepped away from a pretty short career, I think, 2000. Do either of you, did you have a relationship with him at that point because you were just coming onto the scene or what are your recollections of... Liam Sheedy when he uh, when you were arriving as a player. Yeah, when he was I came into wrestling in two thousand, Liam was kind oh. of um, and Michael Ryan were very very close and they were kind of not breaking out into the team. You know they had pre played previous to that, so I suppose they were on the way out more or less. You know, um, so I wouldn't have had a relationship with Liam then. Liam came back in two thousand and three uh, as a selector with Michael Dial, mm. and the, that year didn't go too well. But I think Liam really built up his reputation with the Tiberi Miners. He won. Uh, the All-Ireland with them in 2006 and he won an Intermediate All-Ireland before that so 
uh, once you hear the younger fellas kind of saying that yeah. he, he's, he's top class and that it's yeah. very intense and that yeah. uh, there's intensity in the training and that, you know, I mean, he runs, he runs it very well. You know, you had that bit of confidence, but sp yeah. still there was, ex you know, there was a small bit of, what's this going to be like? Yeah. You know, because we're after having so many bad years, you're kind of nearly, you've, you've yeah. kind of nearly given in like that. Really, yeah? Yeah, that, you know, who's going to lift us out of this doom yeah. and gloom? And when you got talking to Liam from the word go, you could hear and feel the honesty in his voice. And it's like having a conversation like we're having here now, like, you know, you buy into what someone is saying very, very quick, or you don't. People make up their mind very quick on either, if it's body language or the first couple of lines that you say, do I believe or do I not believe? I believed straight away, because I knew this was going to be different. And I knew that he was going to be there for you. And when they just say, when it got tough, that he was going to back you, and he, and he did. And he would always, he'd always back you up. So you're buying into exactly what he's saying straight away. And that's nothing to do with hurling, nothing to do with winning, nothing to do with anything, but you're buying into his system. Well, we saw what went on before. So, for instance, the few years, just say, uh, with Babs, didn't work out, whatever. And then we saw this, and we said, right. And I remember us having a conversation yeah. after and saying, if we don't win anything with Liam, it means we weren't good enough, because he's after putting everything in place for us to achieve. There's nothing going to be not left there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now the onus is back on the players that we can't blame anymore. We can't blame selectors, we can't blame managers, we can't blame, the, everything is done right on their side. And a big thing then as well was the players that were coming through from the minors. Yes, the Paulie you know, Mayer, the we, Brendan Mayer. We spoke we, one yes, night and we said, yes. look, there's serious quality coming through here. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's, let's get on the bandwagon here yes. with these lads yes. and let's put the shoulder to the wheel. And you know what I mean? If we're good enough, yeah. we're good enough. And as you said there, yeah. if we're not, we're not. We're not. And they ended up being the backbone of the team, the Paddy Mayor, the Brendan Mayor, there's a few more now just yeah. a little. And had a, an impact straight away straight when, away. when they came into the dressing yeah. room. What was, it he was, what was Liam Sheedy doing that sort of made you guys, outside of the, you know, the experience that was coming from the miners, what actually was he doing that made you guys say, oh, geez, actually, he seems to know what he's doing here. What physically was it? Well, I remember um, the pre-season running programmes and that. Like, oh, it's yeah. really such a big county, yeah. you do them in different areas. And I remember we used to do some of our uh, pre-season running in Kilkenny, actually on the nice. track, because one or two oh, of the yeah. sessions where you do it on a, on a running track. And I remember being in Kilkenny, and you meet up at half seven, there was the Mulhone lads, killing all lads, yeah. and uh, there might be five or six of us. I remember we were running around, yeah. doing our programme, and yeah. uh, I remember next thing you know, half, we started at half seven, next thing maybe around 10 to eight, we were just doing our runs, and next thing, seeing these flashing lights yeah. up in the car park. And Liam was after making his business to come from wherever he was after yeah, coming yeah, from, yeah. be it Limerick, yes. be it Dublin, yes. to come down just to, to check in. Right. And I remember even after seeing the flashing lights, you turn to another, kind of laughing. Yeah. He's here. Yeah, he's with you. But it actually gives you a pep a in lift. your step. Yeah. It yeah. actually gives you a lift. Uh, you felt like, yeah. you know what I mean, he cares. Like. It, and there was another one we used to do with the gym, up on the side of the Devil's Bit, to take about 25 minutes to go from here. And, and we used to, um, Liam used to come and he just come in the door. And we were inside just uh, doing the weights. And we never, ever saw a manager Fallen, fallen as just said to Jim and coming in, he was. But he, you talk to the guys in Limerick. Yeah, he was in Limerick. Oh no, he was in. He yeah, was in. Right. He, was, he was in the Devil's Bit. So he was checking in. But what he was doing, he was just saying, we're all in it together. We're part of it. Because you have to remember, in the beginning of 2008, we were emotional wrecks. Everything that was after going through, we were. We were like you know, there was no. The confidence was zero. We never thought that we were going to going to achieve. We were broken men, and. Eamon O'Shea would, would tell you that when he got us, he, he said that we were emotional and we were, wreck, we were never as low and he had to build that right back up and it's things like that flashing the lights down, clicking anyone, the boys were doing the run, coming into the gym, just pulling in the door, boys were there doing the squats, doing gym work and just staying for three or four minutes but you just knew he had your back, he's there to help and he was after coming from Limerick and God knows what else he was doing. So everything was, every, um, like, you know, just... Liam, with manager style was obviously different but he was probably a control freak in that way that he'd really... You know what I mean? Wanted to know what everyone was doing. Yeah. But that had you on your toes, like. Yeah. And, and he spotted everything. There was nothing that, you know, you wouldn't get away, not saying that we're looking to get away with anything. But I re even remember they used to get the temporary gear year in, year out, and he wanted everybody to wear the same thing for the matches. Yeah. Everyone had to wear the same. And I remember O'Neill's, the, the tracksuit the following year, there was only the slightest little thing on a, on a strip. Just say the slightest little thing, you wouldn't notice it. And he would know if you had the proper bottoms of a tracksuit on, and he pinpointed it. And I said to myself, if he's watching these and sees these things, there's nothing going to miss. And they're only small things, but a lot of small things add up to one big thing at the end of the day. Yeah, look, his attention to detail, detail was yeah. just... It's incredible. Yeah. Oh, it sounds incredible. Yeah. 
Um, and the other thing, Lara, that you credit in all of this, and we sort of touched on a little bit up to now, is the, yeah. obviously the arrival of Eamon O'Shea at that stage, and you say that he changed everything for you. How was that? I was a corner forward from the end of 2000 to 2007, and I thought I knew how to play as a corner forward. But when I actually got talking to Eamon as the months progressed, I learned very, very quick I didn't know how to play. So he used to challenge your mind. He, he brought the movement into Tipperary Hurling, brought, showed us how to move, showed us how to get involved, all the as, uh, aspects. But he took all the pressure off you as, a, as, a, as, a, as, an, as an individual. Mm. Do you know, it, it, like when you're out the back at 10 years of age and you're kicking a ball around, you think you're Maradona. But when you come up after a few years, people knock it out of you that you're not. He brought you back at 10, you know, 10 years of age, yeah. poking the ball around the back and made you feel, feel free and took the pressure off. You know, and I think a word that he, he definitely opened up to us, I'm sure it was there for hundreds of years, was visualisation. Yeah, visualisation. Visualis yeah, yeah. It yeah. was that you see yourself making these runs. Yeah. You he, know. Used to, he used to say, in, um, I remember we were playing, I think it could have been Kilkenny in the league. We were warming up in... Um, what was it? Um, Kieran's College. St. Kieran's. Yeah, yeah St. Kieran, yeah, Kieran's. And I remember him just coming to me, we're walking in line, he he his gear on in the back. And I remember him telling me, hey, the back man has you till April. I says, what, what you mean? Back man has you till April. I said, what you mean? He wouldn't tell me. And I think it could have been a, a kind of let you think about it. Yeah. And it was really that, just say, if you're not playing well in the league, the ground is slower, it's a bit softer, it's back man suits you, just don't think too much about it. Wait till we get to first round championship, Munster final, which have to peak in Crow Park, top of the ground, and this is what he wanted. He was talking about the four. So he, you knew that, and he understood that the back man might have you to April, but there were only the two words that then kept going. Yeah. yeah. But you knew, you, you just open up your mind to different things. Well, he was great, like he'd, he'd make you think. Like, that was yeah, it. he'd make you think. You know yeah. what I mean? And he'd make you think of the second or third shot ahead, like, yes. you know, what was, yes. kind of, what was nearly coming to happen. And, you know, you often hear the professional players now. Uh, out halves and that. Yeah. They talk a lot about visualization. Yeah. Yeah. I always like to think of it. It was it was a journey when when they came in. We're on the journey for a couple of years. We would have loved to be on the journey. Yeah. With, uh, yeah. Liam and and Eamon those from for longer, but it was definitely a journey. And as you said, we were all united yes. in our way of thinking. Number yeah. one. But like Larry's not going to say it, but uh, Larry brought his his game to a different mm -hmm. level completely. Yeah. And like for me, and I've no no problem in saying that Larry was the best forward in the country for three years. Oh nine, ten, eleven. His form was just. Like, you know, people just turned on the TV to watch Lair mm. because just his movement and how he was ghost into positions and then his finishing, he was matching that with his finishing. Yeah. I mean, you get those chances to have to finish. So, you know, that once you have a key, a marquee forward in delivering day in, day out, you're always going to be very, very competitive. And I think that's that's the level that, that Lair brought us to as well. 2010 was obviously a mad year and there's the court game and Isaki runs amok in the in, in that yeah, game. Yeah. And Gerlach Nan, watching back a bit of it during the week, uh, said after the game that uh, his quote was that that court game robbed Tipperary of any notions of grandeur. That happened, and that's when Lean came into his own. He backed us. So what happened in 2009, Tipperary were back up on a pedestal again. First round of the championship, we went down, got bet by 10 points. So it was very easy for Lean to say, yeah, Owen, Lair, it's over for you. New lads coming in. But we had a meeting after that, and he, 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 he backed us. He backed that team. To um, just focus on the final a little bit, um, Lar just gets three scores obviously that day, three uh, brilliant goals obviously. Yeah. That day w was three, like you know, you, it's, it's just you, do, you don't, you don't, you just don't believe it at the time. You, you look back at it on video after 2010, and you're still waiting for one of the balls to go wide. You don't believe that the three went in, like you know, you're looking at it. But like, we'll just say the second goal that day. That's that's what Tipperary were is. Noel McGrath gets the ball. I knew before Noel got it, I was getting it because we had done that. That's what that's Noel's game. So that was over and over and over again. It was just lucky that it happened in an yeah. All Ireland final. It was the teamwork, like that, yeah, that was instilled into yeah. us. Yeah. Now make you could make that run maybe a few years beforehand, and maybe you wouldn't have got it because we didn't know each other's play as much. But that ball that Noel got, I knew I was getting it. But Eamon O'Shea had that over and over again. That's yeah. the, that's the one that Noel caught it. Hand passed yeah. it, and I was I was after making my run before Noel got it because I knew what was going to happen, yeah. and that's what you'd try and think in any yeah. situation. You know, you, you do celebrate all earnings when, when you win, like that's yeah. you know, yeah. and the whole county gets behind you and all that. And you know, I suppose we would have travelled all over the world, like from yeah. New York to Boston, like you yeah. know. And I remember even the following March, I was still on the go. I remember I went to the got an invitation to the White House over oh, yeah, 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 that's over right. in Washington. Yeah. Uh, was oh, yeah. Dan, Dan that was Rooney. good timing, wasn't it? Dan, yeah, Dan Rooney, he was the, the ambassador to Ireland and 
remember getting a call from his PA, this Patricia Reber. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you've been invited to the White House, we'll get your details. And I was full sure it was a prank. Yes. Same again. I said, oh, that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be waiting yeah. outside. I'll be waiting. If I see the mini bus coming, it's... Uh... Left down the phone and I said, I mean, forget about that now. I know I'm not going to be making a fool yeah. of myself here. And I mean, get the call back again. Sorry, Mr. Kelly, we haven't received your details. Yes, and yes, yes. So I was kind of... So like, you know, even six months later, you're kind of... You're still in, in celebration kind of mode, like, you know, and I suppose maybe that might have been different if Liam Sheedy had to stay on as manager. Because we got we got the bad news that October after winning the All in two thousand and ten, uh, that he was stepping down as manager. That so was unexpected. That was definitely unexpected. Yeah, yeah. I remember you you ringing me and I said, "Oh my God, I can't believe this," and it was like it was, it was like as if there was a death in the family because we were after buying into every single thing that they said, and the word family was men was mentioned togetherness. We're on this. We're in this. United we're in this together. Strong, united. Yeah. And we bought and we bought into it. And we actually thought, yes, we were a family. Yeah, we were working together. But we, I suppose what we overlooked was, at the end of the day, people have their own families and have their own careers and their own work to look after. But we kind of maybe joined them all up together. Yeah. Tipperary hurling clearly didn't fall off a cliff edge after that, but I do want to go forward to, to 2012 and another monster win, obviously, at that point, and Kilkenny in the semis this time. Larry, you know where I'm headed with this. The it got a lot of coverage afterwards. The... Lar versus Tommy versus Jackie conversation. Yeah, it always yeah. felt that it like it felt in the immediate aftermath. There was a lot of the, a tone of the coverage seemed to be yeah. there was a sneering element to it, and yeah. I've never really heard fully explained. You know, like Babs was writing about uh, you know Declan Ryan could yeah. get this more wrong. And yeah, what happened? How did that come about? Two thousand and eleven, I think Kilkenny kind of changed to man marking. So that's the this thing started in two thousand and eleven that um, Jackie Terr was a man marking job on myself. We kind of knew. Going into 2011, I think we had kind of an inkling that this was that this was that this was going to happen. So, to me, that's a very easy job for a backman is just to take a take a guy out. And I kind of struggled with that for a good few months after. Right, so how can we counteract it? What can we do? So I can go out the next day and you can just man mark. So a man can just stop you playing, stop you, stop you hurling. So are you just going to accept it? Are you going to try? Are you going to try different things? Mm. So we had to come up with something different. So were we going to go into 2012 and just do the same thing again? Mm. So. The situation was that, like, you know, we had a meeting in the jockey, like, you know, the management were there, the players were represented. We said we were going to come up with some sort of a plan and we were going to, and we were going to stick to it. We went to train and inside in Turles, we'd we done it in a training game. Where I remember I was man marking Tom Stapleton at, at, at the time. Tom didn't know what was happening. We were going to kind of mimic what we were going to do this the, the week after. So if you, ask, you ask people at half time in that game, are you happy with the system? Are you happy with the Tipperary went in a pint up at half time. So were people happy? Were people happy with the system? The answer would have to be, yeah, you take that. So it took 35 minutes of hurling for everyone to change their mind to say, right, so I'm going to blame Lara now for getting bit by 18 pints. So even if I had to score three goals again that day, we were still bit by mm. X, X amount. So we're still, you know, that's how far away we were from winning. So Kilkenny scored four, I think, twi 424. 424 that day. I didn't realise that I was going to take the slack on the whole act. So, like, I wasn't marking 15 players. Where did you get the idea from? Um, I remember going to um, I remember going to Aust I remember going to Aust Australia in Christmas in 2011, and I remember um, I was big into watching professionals playing and professionals train. And um, Sedanta Halpine was after changing from Carrollton to. Um, was great Sutter and um, I can't remember the professional team in Sydney that he was with. So I got in contact with him to know would I be able to go to a training, just say a training day. But I was able to get in and sit in all the team meetings and the forwards had meetings, the backs had meetings, everything was done with video analysis and it just blew my mind mm. as 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 regards what was what was happening. It was fascinating just to just to just to see it. And I remember talking to the head coach after, and I says, like, you know, have you, is there a forwards coach here? And he said, yeah, and he says, his man's name was Stuart, just, his second name's after um, leaving me. And I said, do you mind if I have a, have a, have a, have a chat with him? He said, yeah. So I kind of gave a kind of a scenario in my mind that I was after playing a game last year. I didn't say anything about just a temporary hurl. I said, I was after playing a game last year. I said, I was taken out of it. I said, I didn't perform, but I said, the guy that I was marking had his mind made up, their management had the mind made up, that, you know, everywhere I went, he was following, 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 and just couldn't shake him off. He had no interest in the, in the game that day. Once I didn't touch it, he was happy. Because I said, they didn't want to let happen what happened in 2010, 
and 2009. So it wasn't going to happen three years in a row. I remember that, and the first words out of uh, the forwards coach says to me, who's their leader? Who's their key man? And I kind of said, at the time, I would have said, Tommy Welsh. Well, he says, you have to do something about him and ask the question. So ask the next question. So if you were to track him, will Jackie track you? I said, yeah, I will, because they've their mind made up. He said, you have to try something, but t you have to try and track their key man, because that's what they're after doing. That has to open up an avenue for other players. So if you have Jackie Terrell and Tommy Welsh in a space, there has to be space for other people. But you have to get to a space where they don't want to be. Mm. So if Jackie wants to be in the corner and Tom Welsh wants to be in the wing, well now, can you go midfield? Can you go centre back? Can you, can you change? So you have to keep asking the question. And that just got my mind kind of going. And I remember coming back, we just had a, a, a couple of discussions with Jesse with the management at the time, and we'd done it inside in training. And that's kind of where it just uh, originated from. Because I said, go back up to Crow Park with no game plan and do the same as you've done in 2011. It's not going to, it's not mm. going to work. And just before we wrap, lads, I wanted to sort of uh, talk to you in some respects about, well, particularly with you, Owen, go back to where, where it all began. You're both back playing for the club, LR, fairly successfully for, for Sarsfields and Owen. Uh, to complete the circle back between the goal. That's it, yeah. I um, I went back with the club this year, but kind of old injuries kind of cropped up again, you know. So I was trying to go back playing outfield, and uh, then the odd day our goalkeeper couldn't make games for league games. And I ended up back in the goal, so I was back double jobbing again this year. But um, you know, it's like anything when you finish up, you know, you, you like to be injury free back with your club. So I, I kind of had a lucky year that way. I was. A few old injuries came came back again, and uh, you know we didn't finish up a successful season, so it was disappointing. But you know, it's nice to get back to the to the club, back with the lads and that, and uh, you know I'm hoping maybe I'll get a clear run of uh, of injuries next year and, and enjoy it again. I think there's another couple of years maybe left in me at, at club level. Please yeah. God. Yeah, and Lara, you obviously stood aside in 2012. It was fairly uh, uh, previously in 2012, and it was reported at that point you'd retired. That wasn't actually the case. Is there a possibility that we're going to see Lara Corbett in temporary colours again, or is it? Sarsfields for you now for the next few years before you bow out. Yeah, it's Sarsfields and and that's it. And I was delighted just this year to go back to the club and we were lucky enough again just contested and won another county final. And when you go back to, when you go back to the club, you actually get a right kick out of the young fellas that you don't probably get a chance to train with and play with mm -hmm. all year. So lads that are coming in, they're 19, they're 20, they they think different, they have a carefree attitude, they care free about anything that's that's happening. And yeah. it's great to go back down just uh, to their mindset because when you go up to the field, you want to switch off and you don't want to take it as as, as serious as work and as everything else. And it was great to it's great to get away. But we're lucky enough, as I said, that it's a successful club and you're part of just say. Uh, the chances of talking out in a county final with Torres Ars is, you know, is very, very high. So it's great that it's taken. It's, 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 it's serious, but there's a good crack and a good element to it in that way. Lara, thanks a million for hosting us here in your beautiful premises no uh, in Thurlis. Happy Christmas to both of you. And thanks a million for spending uh, time with us over the last hour. Thanks very thanks much. Really.